Breakfast. The most important meal of the day. Important, because breakfast is the only thing separating you from death upon waking from an approximately eight-hour-long comatose-like state. It gives the start of your day an energy boost and keeps at bay the feeling of hunger for some number of hours, before the feeling inevitably returns to hound you again. There are, of course, those people who skip breakfast. We don't talk about them here. The rest of us know they are simply too powerful and must be stopped. Breakfast comes in many different forms. Before you acknowledge any of these forms, it is important to take into account what you actually feel like eating, spiritually attune with your stomach. This may be difficult depending on your age. If you are young, you probably won't have any problem. If you are older than, say, above the age of 13, you may have trouble distinguishing your stomach's desire for food from the decrepit, sinking, hollow feeling in your heart that is associated with the repeated action of waking up to face the horror that is being alive. Remember, folks, hunger is where the stomach is, crippling depression is where the heart is. Once you finally manage to attune with your stomach, stop and realize it doesn't really matter what you feel like eating, because you have a busy schedule that keeps you from enjoying even the smallest details of life. Most breakfasts of the American people typically look something like this. Tasteless lifesavers. Bread and butter. Bread and jam. Bread and white vinegar. Juice. Juice. More tasteless lifesavers. Eggs. Bread with cinnamon and butter. Bread with bleach. Fruit. More tasteless lifesavers. These are all good and fine, but I think it gets a bit repetitive. Why not try making something a little more creative in a short amount of time? Something like a parfait. What's a parfait? It means perfect in French, which is absolutely ridiculous. Nothing in life is perfect, no matter how hard we try, because we are all horrible, horrible people. A parfait sounds something like someone from the bourgeoisie made up as they tried to impress King Louis XVI of France before they both got guillotined. As pretentious as a parfait sounds, it's just yogurt. And fruit. Maybe some granola, if you are part of the bourgeoisie. But I am not. So I just have almonds, thinly sliced by factory machines. Let's get started. First... Grab the fanciest glass you have. It has to be fancy, otherwise what's the point? Be sure to wash all the tuberculosis off your fruit. You can use whatever fruit you want, but I'm using raspberries and bananas and some blueberries. Slice whatever fruit needs slicing. If you are unhappy with your husband, George, cut the banana while he's around whilst chanting a religious hymn in a foreign language. He'll understand. Also, be sure to completely forget about this banana, and do not include it in your parfait. That's important. For this next part, be sure to consult with your cookbook, as it is particularly complicated. It's important to be exact with the proportions and arrangement of your ingredients, otherwise the taste just isn't the same. Just choose the seal of your favored infernal spirit whilst speaking in tongues, and everything should just turn out fine. If it happens that you are not fluent in tongues, that is just the unfortunate product of our crumbling school system, and you should not blame yourself. If by chance your children, Caden, Caden, and Caden, walk in during this process, good. Tell them to lend a hand. It's always a good opportunity to get the youth involved in traditional breakfast rituals. Okay, good. We're nearly finished. Add your yogurt and fruit into the glass. If you have any extra fruit, give it to your dog, who may or may not still be alive. Are you alive? Oh no, you are. I'm so sorry. Add some granola or whatever 
to the top of your parfait. I am putting almonds along with grape nuts on top, because I enjoy the feeling of my teeth shattering into a million tiny shards as I chew. Make your breakfast memorable. Admire your resulting breakfast briefly before mildly insulting the parfait to remind it that it in fact is not perfect and only diluting itself. You are horrible and nobody likes you. Now it's time to dig in. You silently decide that it would probably be better with granola rather than almonds. Your neighborhood friend, Deborah, probably uses granola in her parfait and her kids love it. Never mind, you decide still silently. Almonds are better than granola. Almonds are great on everything, and they have less added sugar than granola does, Deborah. Anyway, your parfait may not be perfect, but it does taste pretty good. Let it be the imperfect start to your morning. Enjoy. Enjoy.